position. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is the Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, December 8th. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Mr. Harper. Here. Mr. Jensen. Here. Ms. Atkins. Here. Mayor Abawasli. Here. Mr. Brandt. Here. Ms. Menser. Here. Mr. Cernet. Here. <clears throat> Thank you. This time we have a moment of silence. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Well, tonight we have a really special presentation. Um, I'll come down front and can we have John McIntosh come forward, please? Chief, would you like to come up too? All right. Well, I was recently feeling feeling really special because I'd been at my job for 30 years. Um, John has completed 50 years on the Marion Fire Department. That is a, a really tremendous uh, milestone. Uh, it says so much about you, John, and it says a lot about your work family and the department. Um, 50 years, you've seen a lot of uh, growth and change in the department as well as our city. You've served the city well. Uh, we are grateful on behalf of all the residents of Marion, the city council and the entire team. I'd like to congratulate you um, on completing 50 years and wish you the best in your retirement. We have a plaque here for you um, to John McIntosh in appreciation of your 50 years of dedicated and devoted service to the city of Marion and its residents, October 1972 through October, 2022. Chief? Yes. 50 years, you know, when I uh, met John and we had a, um, uh, a great conversation together here recently. And uh, when I heard 50 years, I was just, I'm like, holy smokes, that's awesome. <laughs> But I tell you, you know, the dedication um, that you've shown, not only you, but also your family um, to support you and your service to our community is is just so fantastic and, and well worth the recognition that you're receiving this evening. And so we also have a plaque to present John this evening on behalf of the fire department. John McIntosh, 1972 to 2022. Thank you for providing 50 years of dedication and service to the citizens of Marion and the Marion Fire Department. So John, congratulations. Well, after 50 years and all the firefighters I've been with, uh, it's been a great journey. There's a few things I'll miss from the fire department. Uh, Going out at Christmas time when we deliver Christmas packages, it's very, very touching. And the other thing is the training we did on fire extinguishers with all the kids in the schools. I'll miss all that. So thank you.
Okay, and thanks to the fire department crew for, for showing up to support John. <clears throat> All right. Um, Next, we have a proclamation. I've asked uh, Councilmember Atkins to present the proclamation. Are you here to receive the proclamation? Are you here for International Human Rights Day? Yeah, come on up. I'm Colette, nice to meet you. Okay. Human Rights Day is observed every year on December 10th, the day the United Nations General Assembly adopted in 1948 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And whereas Human Rights Day recognizes the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a milestone document that proclaimed the inalienable rights which everyone is inherently entitled to as a human being, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, language, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status, <clears throat> and is the most translated document in the world, available in more than 500 languages. And whereas thanks to the, to the declaration and state's commitments to its principles, the dignity of millions has been uplifted and the foundation for a more just world has been laid. While its promise is yet to be fully realized, the very fact that, that it has stood the test of time is a testament to the enduring universal, universality, goodness, of its perennial values of equality, justice, and human dignity. And whereas the Universal Declaration of Human Rights empowers us all, the principles enshrined in the Declaration are as relevant today as they were in 1948. Now, therefore, I, Colette Atkins, on behalf of Nicholas Aboasli, mayor, mayor of the City of Marion, do hereby, hereby proclaim December 10th, 2022, as International Human Rights Day, and urge residents of the City of Marion to stand up for their own rights and the rights of others, and through our own daily actions, help to shape a community that values all people and promotes equality, justice, and human dignity. I would like to say thank you for giving us this proclamation. This could not have happened at a better time. In this world today, there is so much disturbing going on. People are forgetting about each other and we're all humans. It doesn't matter what size we are, what gender we are, what uh, race, social economics, we're all humans. And I would just like to leave one word to each one of you. And that's to remember this, all things bright and beautiful, we are all humans on this earth. So please take time to love one another. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate those words. Okay, at this time we have a public forum, which is a time set aside for uh, comments from members of the public on any topic that is listed on the agenda, but not associated with the public hearing. If anyone's here to address the council on any item that is on the agenda, but not part of a public hearing, please come forward. Okay, we'll, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Mincer. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as follows. <clears throat> Items A1 through F6. Resolutions 31013 to 31037. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented, including items A1 through F6, resolutions 31013 through 31037. Any discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved for the next section of the agenda. I'll turn over the meeting to the mayor pro tem. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abelosley as abstention as follows. This will be items A1 through E2, resolutions 31038 through 31039. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda with Mayor Abelosley's abstention as follows. Items A1 through E2, resolutions 31038 through 31039. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion carries with one abstention. I'll turn the meeting back over to the mayor. Okay. Your Honor, I move to approve ordinance number 22-24, amending chapter 31 of the Marion Code of Ordinances relating to the Civil Rights Commission. This is our initial consideration. Second. It's been moved by Council Member Harper, seconded by Council Member Sternad. To approve ordinance number 22-24, amending chapter 31 of the Code of Ordinances relating to, this, to the Civil Rights Commission. Discussion? All those in favor of ordinance number 22-24, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion is approved. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31040. Approving an amendment to the 28E agreement with Cedar Rapids regarding Civil Rights Commission staffing <coughs> services. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31040, approving the amendment to the 28E agreement with the City of Cedar Rapids regarding Civil Rights Commission staffing services. Discussion. All those in favor of resolution 31040, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. This time we have a public hearing on a proposal to enter into a road use tax revenue loan agreement and to borrow money there under in the principal amount not to exceed $18,400,000. Public hearing is open. May we have a presentation, please? Thank you. Right. Um, so I'm actually uh, going to cover A3 through A8, which uh, covers uh, three public hearings. I'll make, the, um, I'll, I'll make a short presentation, and then you can do the formal procedures on those. So the background to this, if you recall that uh, this came before council as a, as a presentation on November 1st with, uh, with a Michael Maloney and uh, DA Davidson. So this is um, three issuances for the public service staff facility uh, split from um, road use tax, sound use sewer and solid waste. So we are seeking authority as we finalize uh, the bids and the contracts on the facility. Construction, as you know, is already underway. Um, and we're looking to move forward first with the road, uh, with the road use financing. So um, I'll start with the road use part here. Um, so the split, if you recall, uh, was 64% for road use financing, 12% for sewer, and 24% uh, for solid waste. Um, I'll start with the road use uh, portion. The estimated road use portion for the facility is 15.5 million. Um, the public hearing that you'll see is the authorization uh, for financing not to exceed 18.4 million. Now, as Michael Maloney uh, uh, pointed out, there is, um, you'll see under the last section, there's reserves, there's contingency, there's built into that. Um, we are being very conservative. The 18.4 million for road use, we do not expect to be there, but we just wanna be fiscally responsible, efficient with everybody's time, and um, the legal costs, we are looking that the 18.4 is the maximum, okay? So we're expecting that to come under the same with the other funds also as we get the bids and, and the numbers become more sure. So this action tonight 
does not secure any financing. It's just the authorization to proceed forward. So that states there that the loan agreements or any bid agreements would be action at a future council meeting. There's no, um, you're not authorizing, sorry, you are authorizing, um, but you're not approving any loan agreements tonight. So the solid waste is the next largest portion at 24%. Uh, You'll see the difference here. So the public service facility estimate for solid waste is uh, 5.8 million. You'll see that there is a deficit a deficit of outstanding debt that we are looking to refinance into that, given our loan covenant that's been uh, discussed with the original financing with the public service facility. That also applies to Sandry Sewer. So that's where you'll see the, uh, the 2.345 million is the payoff of that existing um, agreement. And again, there's the contingencies and the reserves, very conservative numbers um, for to authorize uh, no more than 10.1 million under solid waste. And then, and, and then San Jose Sur would be the smallest portion of 12%. And again, you'll see that deficit of the outstanding debt with the uh, reserve and the uh, contingencies there in place um, with the authorization not to exceed 6.8 million. So I said it's our plan. The clearest path uh, forward as this project is uh, moving forward is to do the road use, uh, the road use financing uh, portion first. Uh, take any any questions before we went to the public. Okay, so well, we'll wait on the questions until when we get to the actual okay. motions. Is yeah. that okay? Yeah, right. for sure. So is that it, Brian? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, the public hearing is open on the proposal to enter into the road use tax revenue loan agreement. Anyone here to address council either in favor or in opposition of this measure, please come forward. Okay, so we'll close the public hearing on the road use tax revenue loan agreement and move on to the motion. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 31041, taking additional action on proposal to enter into a road use tax revenue loan agreement. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31041, taking additional action on the proposal to enter into a road use tax revenue loan agreement. Any discussion or questions for Brian or staff? Yes, go ahead. Steve. Yeah, I think we need to clarify two things that have been discussed in prior meetings, but really have not been uh, maybe uh, alluded to tonight, Brian. And if we can, we, we're talking about entering into these loan agreements. So if we could uh, tell everybody listening to this, what the purpose of these loans are, and also talk about the reserve fund, why money is going into the reserve fund, and uh, why extra money is going, uh, just that, why extra money is going into the reserve fund. So those two things. Um, so if I, if I understand your question correctly, um, so it's for the financing of the new public service uh, facility. Um, our, es our estimated costs had been at $28 million. We're, um, as we speak, we had bids uh, today, we'll be discussing those tomorrow. So the numbers um, will become uh, more clear. Um, the reserve, um, the reserve that's uh, uh, stated there on, uh, on uh, the tables, that is dependent on the loan agreements or the bond agreements if we are required to put reserve funds in place. We're not sure yet, that's an estimate, um, but those are conservative numbers that given the size, that's, that's the numbers that are um, that uh, Michael Maloney um, had estimated. So, um, but that's that's uh, dependent on you know whether it's a bond, a loan. That uh, would be we may not have that size of reserves needed. And uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I think people when they talk about a reserve fund, I mean obviously uh, some of those reserve funds are needed because of loan covenants right. uh, to meet those obligations, and as well 
just to be financially prudent and be building up reserve funds to a proper level. And so some of these funds have been maybe a little lower than we would like. So this will help us in, in uh, both of those areas. So I think we just wanna make sure people that are not here tonight listening do understand uh, the purpose of these loans. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead, Grant. Yeah. Brian, somewhat on the same theme, and I know that we discussed this, I think, in a work session, but I, I was focused on the contingencies that were built into each of these. Um, and um, so, as I recall, um, the discussion around that, this is a contingency that should the project um, progress in a manner that requires immediate uh, additional funding because of materials changes, labor changes, whatever the case, it's that contingency value that we would draw on first. Is that correct? Um, so that contingency is actually a standard 7% um, from DA Davidson in their, in their analysis. Um, the contingency should be built into the bid packages. So um, that's our understanding. That, that contingency is again, built in there, 7%, uh, it, it doesn't per se directly to materials to, it's, it's more of a, a best practice to be conservative, to come to a number that when you're authorizing that we don't have to come back, but it's not, it, it, it does not per, per se directly relate to materials that should be, the contractors should be building that into their bid packages. Okay. But if, I guess if, if I'm the project manager, and I make uh, I, I make a um, an error in determining my own contingency base. This would accommodate any other unforeseen changes to the project that um, are could. out of our out of our control. It could, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving resolution number three one zero four one, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the next public hearing is a, on a proposal to enter into solid waste revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement and to borrow money there under in the principal amount not to exceed $10,100,000. And you, that, that was covered by the presentation already. So uh, we'll go ahead and ask for comments from members of the public, either in favor or in opposition. Anyone here to address the council on this? Okay, seeing no one's coming forward, we'll close that public hearing, move on to the resolution. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 31042, taking additional action on proposal to enter into a solid waste revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement. Second. So moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31042, taking additional action on the proposal to enter into a solid waste revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement. Discussion? <clears throat> Questions are answered. Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 31042, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion is approved. The next public hearing is on the proposal to enter into a sewer revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement and to borrow money there under in a principal amount not to exceed $6,800,000. We'll again ask for comments from members of the public, either in favor or in opposition. Please come forward. Okay, and I should ask, have we received comments outside of this meeting on these measures? We have not. Okay, all three of them? Correct. Okay. Please note that for the record. We'll close the public hearing on the sewer revenue improvement agreement, um, and we'll move on to the resolution. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve resolution number 31043, taking additional action on proposal to enter into a sewer revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31043, taking additional action on the proposal to enter into a sewer 
sewer revenue improvement and refunding loan agreement discussion. Okay, all those in favor of approving resolution number 31043, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Next item is a public hearing regarding the 788 Second Street Disposal Project. We have the city engineer to tell us about that. Yes, Your Honor. So this is part of the future Alpernet Road project. So Second Street will be widened to the west. Um, so the current, what we call the water house. Um, so it's, it's still owned by the water department, even though it's under the city's name. So we'll have a transaction that occurs at a later date to actually buy the property from them. But since they no longer have a tenant in it, it made sense to go ahead and demo that property so they're not continuing to pay utilities on that structure. Um, so we went out and solicited for bids. We received two bids back. The low one was from DW Zenzer at $30,950,000, which is 96.64% of the engineer's estimate. So we're recommending proceeding with that contract. Okay, thank you. Public hearing is now open. If anyone is here to address council, either in favor or in opposition to this measure, please come forward. Have you received comments outside the meeting? We have not. I have not. <clears throat> Please note that for the record. We'll close the public hearing. Mayor, I move to approve project calendar regarding the 788 Second Street Disposal Projects. This is resolutions 31044 and 31045. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the project calendar for the 788 Second Street Disposal Project, including resolutions 31044 and 31045. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to approve project calendar regarding the 2023 storm sewer project as follows. It, this includes <clears throat> resolutions numbers 31046 through 31048. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the project calendar for the 2023 storm sewer project, including resolutions 31046 through 31048. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. For the next two items, I will turn over the meeting of the mayor pro tem. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to approve ordinance number 22-23, approving a request to rezone the property from AG Agricultural Holding to SR-3 Suburban Medium Density Single Family Residential for property located west of Winslow Road and south of Tower Terrace Road, extended Marion, Iowa, and this is from Atwood Rentals, LLC, and this is the final consideration. Second has been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 22-23, approving a request to rezone the property from AG Agricultural Holding to SR3 Suburban Medium Density Single Family Residential for property located west of Winslow Road and south of Tower Terrace Road Extended, Marion, Iowa. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote on the final consideration. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries with one abstention. Your Honor, I move to approve resolution number 31049, approving the Osage Estate Estates preliminary plat for property located west of Winslow Road and south of Tower Terrace Road extended. Marion, Iowa, Atwood Rentals, LLC. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 31049, approving the Osage Estates preliminary plat for property located west of Winslow Road and south of Tower Terrace Road Extended, Marion, Iowa. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries with one abstention, and I'll move the meeting back to the mayor. 
Next item on the agenda is a public hearing regarding an amendment to chapter 176 of the code regulations to establish chapter 176.56 architectural design standards and site development plan review. We have Nicole here to present. Yes, good evening, Mayor Mayor and Council. So I'm just gonna do a brief update from Tuesday's meeting, um, a little condensed version. Again, we've been working on this since November 21, um, after we received direction from City Council. Since then, we've presented to both Council and the Planning and Zoning Commission and received feedback from them, took that feedback along with feedback from the Home Builders Association members and some local architects, refined the proposed ordinance. Um, and then last month, the Planning and Zoning Commission, after reviewing it for a few months, did recommend approval of what was submitted for the proposed ordinance. So the intent of the design standards and site development plan review ordinance is to set some of those minimum design standards across the city, um, not just in our central quarter where we currently have some or in some other areas of Marion, but to include the entire city with some of those minimum standards. Also to implement goals and objectives that we find within our Marion Comprehensive Plan. Um, one of the things that is mentioned within that plan is to establish um, items that enhance and appeal the image of the city through better design and development and to encourage high quality unified design and development for all projects throughout the city. So we believe this ordinance does kind of fit within that without um, overreaching what that comp plan is asking us to do. And then we also built off of what um, design standards we currently have in place. Like I said, we've got the central corridor design standards. And then we also have a central corridor overlay standards from Second Avenue to Highway 13. And then we looked at the ones that were previously in existence along Tower Terrace Road. So this is the same map that was shown on Tuesday. As you can see, it does cover um, all corners of Marion. We've got multifamily, the recreation and open space, public institutional office, and then our three kind of um, commercial districts that are citywide. And this we do exclude um, the recreation and open space and public institutional for buildings that would be non-occupiable, um, but any main structure um, would be included within the design standards. So this is slightly tweaked from Tuesday's chart. This is the exact um, material list that is shown within the proposed ordinance. So you can see we've listed out the facade materials along with which ones we would consider primary material versus secondary and trim material. Um, everything that's a primary, primary material is listed as that secondary and trim material. That was actually one of the comments we received from one of the local architects um, was to include what was primary as the secondary. So it was a little more obvious to the general user. So we're like, yeah, that's great feedback. We went ahead and kind of implemented that then. Um, so materialist was the main um, sticking point at the Planning and Zoning Commission. And this footnote, footnote um, along with keeping that materialist kind of in general terms, um, they felt allowed for new materials to come to market without having to update this ordinance, but it also provides design professionals kind of that freedom and flexibility to do what they do best. Um, they've got their credentials for form balance, um, what buildings kind of look like. So we feel that this does help maintain kind of that integrity of their profession. This got squished. Um, the site development plan review, we've added in manufacturing districts, um, kept all the other districts the same that would be reviewed under architectural standards. But for the site development plan, we've included the, the manufacturing. Um, it is important to have extra sets of eyes on that site layout. Is parking, kind of, is that the best spot for it? How are the driveway accesses um, being located, pedestrian access, all of those elements? 
what's included within this proposed ordinance um, that we don't currently have on top of kind of the architectural standards is lighting standards and then requiring that sidewalk between the public sidewalk and the front door of a um, business. Other standards that we currently review site plans under already are landscaping standards, um, parking regulations. We work with engineering to make sure that the accesses are being located in the appropriate places according to their code standards. Um, so there is a lot of coordination between not just the different zoning regulations, but various departments as well. So this is just kind of adding more of that formalized process. This is the review criteria. Um, so what we've been proposing throughout um, this process is that the Planning and Zoning Commission would have that final consideration of the projects. That way we can leave um, this objective kind of item up for an appeal process if the applicants don't agree with what the commission kind of um, decides. So we would have the city council be our group for that appeal process. We feel like, again, that does um, allow any applicant kind of that flexibility and that extra step knowing that, hey, they do have someone else that they can voice their opinion to. And then this map shows not only what this proposed ordinance covers, but the other areas in town where we already have um, design standards in place, and those are highlighted in orange. Um, number one is our central corridor zoning districts. They've got architectural standards. Um, they've also have a specific site plan review process that does end with the city council. And then two, three, and four are planned unit developments, all with very specific design guideline manuals that um, when projects come in in those areas we review, um, they do come to the city council as well, just because of that planned unit development and zoning. That is it. So brief summary from um, Tuesday. Thank you very much. The public hearing is now open. Uh, we'll take comments and we'll, uh, we'll keep the public hearing open for the next two readings. Is there anyone here to address the council? Either in favor or in opposition to this measure, please come forward. <clears throat> Okay, we'll proceed. Uh, we'll keep the public hearing open and proceed to the first reading of the of the ordinance. May I move to approve ordinance number 22-25, amending chapter 176, zoning regulations to establish chapter 176.56, architectural design standards and site development plan review. This is the initial consideration. Second. I moved and seconded. To approve ordinance number 22-25, amending chapter 176 of the Code of Ordinances to establish chapter 176.56, architectural design standards and site development plan review. Discussion? Your Honor. Great. Yeah, just a, a couple of comments. Uh, Nicole, uh, the thing that I appreciate about this effort <clears throat> that has taken quite a while to work through is, and I, I state this from my brief uh, time on the planning and zoning commission is it at least it, it appears it aligns the roles and gives clarity between city council and, and planning and zoning which ought to add efficiency and streamline the overall process. The other thing um, I, I would just say is um, it really helps clarify uh, for our developers uh, the expectations that are on them from the get go. And so I just, I appreciate the objectives that you went into this with, and I think it'll be helpful to us. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approving ordinance number 22-25, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Next on the agenda is a public forum, which is time set aside for comments on any topic from the members of the public. If anyone's here to address council, please come forward. Please state your name and address. Reverend Gary Sneller, uh, 829 74th Street, Northeast Cedar Rapids. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Good evening. Mayor and members of the City Council. 
Uh, I am co-leader of Standing Unity Faith Coalition for Racial and Social Justice, uh, allied with Marian Alliance for Racial Equity. Uh, co-leader with me is Dr. Ray Coleman, Jr., pastor at uh, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. I'm also a member of the Marian Alliance for Racial Equity, Mayor for short, uh, City Relations Committee. And um, Cersei Stumbo is uh, also a member of that committee and uh, a board member of mayor and was the mayor representative to the Community Equity Task Force that you convened in 2020 and 2021. And as you may know, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of this council's approval of the Community Equity Task Force recommendations. And a year ago, I was here to speak to you in favor of those recommendations. And at that time, I urged you to not just approve them, but to put them into practice, to implement them. And uh, uh, three months ago, Cersei spoke during the public comment portion at the end of this regular meeting to inquire about the city's progress toward implementing the recommendations that you approved and to indicate how much we at mayor are looking forward to continuing to work with you and to hear more about progress in, implement, in implementing these recommendations. However, to date, we as an organization, uh, nor as representatives to the task force, have received any information on actions taken, the impacts of these actions, and deliberations around the many issues discussed at the task force meetings and the issues that were left open. Uh, we continue to hear concerns from our neighbors in the community. We at Mayor remain committed to the work that we all agree must be ongoing to ensure Marion is a welcoming, diverse, and inclusive community, and we hope that you remain committed to that work as well. We wait in anticipation to work with you and to hear more information about implementation of these recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to address council? Reverend, you mentioned that you um, hear concerns in the community. I would urge you again that if you do hear some concerns, you'd have them reach out to me directly. I appreciate that. And Mayor, if I could just- Yes, go ahead. There, there has been, just, just, just to confirm, there has been quite a bit of work that has been going on here at the city level. Uh, we've been working with Thomas Newkirk, who is an equity inclusion inclusion consultant, along with looking at our employee handbook, along with working uh, on our equity statement, which we're doing through the Civil Rights Commission, and we've vented it through many other different channels, and we'll soon be sending that and sharing that with our school district representatives as well. So there is quite a bit of work that is being done, and we will complete a report as we finish some de some of these details up, and we'll be sharing that out as well. Thank you. Anyone else address council? Please come forward. Okay, then we'll move on to council comments. Council Member Sternad. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good today, other than oh, happy birthday, Grant. <laughs> Thank you, Will. <laughs> Pull it. Um, I just appreciate the reminder that it's been a year. Tomorrow is a year. It's crazy that hard work, good hard work that our community did, and so appreciate the, the um, reminder that it's been a year. Thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to being able to share all our good work through the report that Kim was talking about this evening. So um, it's a good reminder. Thank you. Steve. Uh, yeah, last Friday was the Peppermint Walk and Santa Claus coming to town. Uh, fortunately, the weather that night was, was really terrific. Uh, and the crowd was huge. Uh, I think this, that's a perfect, another perfect mm -hmm. example of the benefit of having Sixth Avenue designed the way it was so that we can close off Seventh Avenue between 10th and 12th Street to accommodate the crowd, to let the families and kids walk the streets in that area in a very safe manner uh, because it, it was a huge crowd, uh, a fantastic event, 
Uh, and so I've heard a lot of comments from other people about the positive comments that others have received. Uh, I've seen a lot of people from surrounding communities. So that's what those events and our uptown design is all about. And thanks to our parks department and, and our public services for getting all up all of our Christmas lights uh, in the park and uh, around town. So it looks great. Thank you. Okay. Well, so Will blew my cover. <laughs> you know, I tried to hide this, uh, these birthday things, you know. Um, and I am the senior member of council. I just want to remind mm -hmm. everybody of that. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, for my uh, tenure on council since uh, May of 2020, one of the things that has been, um, even, even today, given some activity working with uh, uh, Deputy City Manager uh, Kim Downs and her staff on um, some RFP reviews, as well as I'll even go to the external constituent perspective of having to deal with resident concerns about the variety of things that confront them on a day in and day out basis. Um, you know, I, what I just find gratifying is within the community of Marion, um, there, is a, there is a characteristic of dialogue that I'm not entirely sure exists anywhere else. And so um, in all the actions that, that come before us, I think my colleagues have the uh, presence of mind, the thought to maintain that. And I'm hoping that our, our citizens feel um, a, a responsiveness to the concerns. And I, in, in the frame of reach higher, um, that's got to continue to be our goal. And I think even evidence tonight, Reverend, you uh, reminding us of some obligations that are on our plate is just another uh, benchmark to that. So um, I'm happy to be here. And this in my entire professional career, short of coaching at Linmar, Coach Weaver, um, it has to be one of the most gratifying things uh, that I've ever experienced. So thanks to my colleagues and thanks to the city staff and the citizens. Thank you. Um, for my part, since the last uh, meeting, um, I had the um, pleasure of helping celebrate Molly Anderson's 100th birthday. Uh, her, some of her friends and uh, family organized a parade in front of her house uh, and uh, was happy to, to, to participate in that celebration. Um, we had the chance to tour the new stadium at Marion High School, as well as the um, renovation or the addition to um, FMI. Um, that was, that was an, uh, a nice thing. Uh, several of the council members attended. Um, we've done We've made further progress on the Law Park Master Plan update. That committee's uh, progressing. Um, the Christmas in the Park event was phenomenal. Um, I wanna thank the Chamber of Commerce and Uptown Marion uh, for their planning of that event over the last 30 years. Uh, but this was by far, this year was the best I've ever seen. We had several thousand people in the Uptown uh, I've never seen people so excited about living in Marion and so so connected to their town and and feeling good about about where they live. Um, it was a tremendous event. Uh, thank you to the Parks Department and Public Service for uh, putting up all those. I know it takes a lot of time to put up all this, the holiday lights every year, but uh, it it really does make a difference in the community, and then people do appreciate it. Um, and just the other day, I had the opportunity to, um, I was invited by my high school teacher, believe it or not, to help uh, second graders decorate gingerbread houses. So that was, uh, that was fun. I'm, um, I'll be speaking next week to all the second graders at one of the, one of the elementary schools. Uh, it's been fun getting back into the schools and doing those things again. And something really fun, uh, yesterday I was asked to get on a virtual call with a city in another part of the country who wanted to hear how Marion has done what, what we've done and what we've accomplished. Um, so our reputation is reaching that far. Um, 
and uh, it was it was an honor to represent our city and to share with them all the good work that's been done here and um, our programs and how we how we got there and and the methodical way in which we plan everything and uh, and work to accomplish it. So I want to thank um, all our staff for giving me that opportunity by all the great work that you do and all our community partners. Um, I've never been so more proud to, to, to be, I've been in this city for 47 years and um, never been more proud to, to be a Marionite. Um, I know everyone works really hard. We've been through a lot this year um, with the transition with the new city manager who started about a year ago and bringing on a new deputy city manager not too long ago. Um, and with their, we've accomplished a lot and we've had a great year. And I uh, wanna encourage everyone to keep reaching higher, to keep working together, keep seeing the best in each other and keep working um, to make Marion the best place to be. With that, we'll adjourn the meeting and we'll see you next time. Have a great evening.